It is the worst time in our history to be a teacher. And why do I say this? Because teachers have the undaunting task to have to compete with TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, little Johnny in the third row flirting with the girl next to him, little, little Susie over there who's a human fidget spinner moving around, all the students in the class that were playing Xbox all the way to 4 o'clock in the morning, these teachers have to compete with all of this. So if you ask me, is it the worst time to be a teacher? I would say, yes, it is the worst time. But it's the best time in our history to be a dynamic teacher. Now you might be asking yourself, what in the world is a dynamic teacher? Because I asked myself the same question many, many years ago when I first started teaching. You see, I was one of those people that couldn't get my students to pay attention to the one person that they hired to teach them, and that was me. They were thinking about all these other things, and this is before all of the internet and social media that we have today. So I said, you know what? I need to be a little bit more dynamic. So I picked up the first dictionary that was in my house, it was the Oxford Dictionary. I opened it up to dynamic, and I read what the Oxford Dictionary So, <clears throat> The Oxford Dictionary states that, okay, my wife told me not to do the British accent, because I actually sound like an old Jamaican man, so it doesn't work for me. So I'm just going to tell you my regular voice. The Oxford Dictionary says, to be dynamic, there are three attributes, energy, vigor, and motion. So let's unpack this for those who are aspiring to be educators and for those who have students or young men in the audience who want to see a dynamic teacher. Number one is energy. Energy means having that enthusiasm that's contagious. You want to have that enthusiasm that people feel it when you speak. It comes out of your soul, not just out of your voice. Have you ever seen that person or heard that person that has the big old Billy laugh, <laughs> and then you want to laugh too, it's kind of contagious. That's what energy is. That's the type of energy. Not speaking loud, not jumping around, but having a contagious aura about you. Because when you have that, they're going to have that. Most teachers these days, they just go in and punch a clock and then go home. And I tell teachers today, if you don't care, they're not going to care. So energy is something you need to have. Number two, vigor. Now, a lot of us know what vigor is, because many of you, and you don't have to tell me today, when December 31st came around, you said, you know what, I'm going to go to the gym, and I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to do some cardio. <laughs> yes, that was me a couple of years ago. <laughs> Chasing goals is my cardio. But that scenario is very familiar to most people, because when you're at the gym, you tend to run until you can't run no more, and you just go a little bit further. So when you have a treadmill, and you go five miles, you go five and a half miles. You're tired, and you come back, now you can go five and a half miles, a little bit further, six miles, six and a half miles. That's what vigor is. So in education, what we're talking about is taking the students to the point where they're almost exhausted, and then stop. Then the next class, take them to the point where they can't think anymore, and then stop. Sooner or later, the students are going to raise their level of excellence and raise their capability to learn more. When you do that, you become a dynamic teacher because you're not going to get kids thinking about anything other than what you're about to say next. Because they know this energetic person is going to have some kind of a vigorous lesson. So we're talking about energy, vigor, and the last one is motion. Now, I'm not talking about walking around. I'm not talking about being this person. That's not what I'm talking about. Motion has a lot to do with the sensory processor in people's minds. And the reason why I say that is because there's something in your brain called the synapse. When somebody sees something new, when somebody experiences a new sound, or something they're unfamiliar with, unexpected, it wakes them up. So having motion means having them and you constantly move. Have the lesson constantly move. Sometimes I give my lessons here. And my entire lesson in that class is right here. Sometimes I give my lessons over here. 
Sometimes I give my lessons in the back of the classroom. I'll tell you why. That motion helps them learn specific things. Because when you have motion, and when you're moving around in different places, when that student needs to have that test, and they say, what was it that Dr. Richard was saying? He was standing at the back of the room when he said that. Now it comes to them. But if you're saying the same thing in the same spot all the time, all of that information gets jumbled up. And therefore, they're seeing everything as the same. So if you want to be a dynamic teacher, those who are inspired by me to be a dynamic teacher, use energy, vigor, and motion. But most importantly, I will tell you, tell all the parents you know, all the community leaders you know, all of the people that have to do with education, have them pick up the dictionary, especially an Oxford dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> Find the word dynamic, underline, and say, I want your teacher to do this. It's the Toastmaster.